OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Welcome everyone. My name is Katrina Tamura and I am um, a teacher from Miracosta and Palomar College. Um, I'm presenting today um, about Canvas. Um, and I know um, that a lot of us have been using Canvas um, during the uh, pandemic time, right? We were in the, the era of, of Canvas and, and learning management systems online. Um, and during the pandemic, I had a really great opportunity. Um, and that opportunity was to develop um, three different courses, Canvas courses, um, for other teachers to use with their students. Um, and I did that for my college, uh, for Palomar. Um, and of course, for Miracosta, I made my, my own Canvas courses as well. Um, but the ones I developed um, for Palomar were to share with other teachers as well. Um, so um, I wanna share um, what I did um, with those Canvas courses today um, and what I learned um, through the process of developing them. And also um, at the same time, I was taking um, a lot of at one courses and I got a certificate in um, online teaching and design um, from at one, um, which is no joke. It's it, um, that course in that program is um, very effective and it gives you a lot of um, great information if you're looking for um, for certification or if you really want to know more about um, about um, designing in Canvas. Um, so today we're going to focus on two things. Um, we're going to focus on the home page and the module flow. Okay, um, and um, so today we're going to uh, learn about student friendly Canvas courses. What makes it student friendly? Um, and the creating of your home pages and the planning of those modules. Um, so I just wanted to start off to uh, kind of learning a little bit about you. Um, and um, so in the chat, could you let me know, um, do you currently use Canvas? Um, what is your class format? Are you synchronous, asynchronous, uh, hybrid? high flex or in person. I know that personally I'm teaching uh, five classes this, this term. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be I, um, synchronous um, in, in Zoom. I am asynchronous <laughs> um, in Canvas. Um, I'm hybrid. So I do um, both on campus and on, in Zoom um, depending on the day of the week. Um, and next term, I'm going to be high flex, which means that the students will be with me in class um, physically, and also some of them can choose to be online um, at the same time um, through Zoom. And then I'm also in person. Um, and I have a Canvas page for each of those. Um, so I see, Evelyn, you use Canvas with low beginning ESL students in person. Um, you use it for CTE, okay, we're in person. Um, and no, you don't use it yet. Um, and and uh, so anyone else wanna, I'm waiting for some more. Okay, so you use Canvas uh, for four classes, two distance learning courses, one in person and what, okay, you're like me. <laughs> you, you're an eclectic teacher, eclectic formats here. Um, but I think we can agree that um, whatever, however intensively you're using Canvas courses, um, they are the homepage and module flow are really important. Um, so you're, I see Lois, you're you're using this online, one-on-one um, -on -one in Zoom. Um, no Canvas courses yet. No, no Canvas course yet. Um, 
All right. Well, um, I want to take a look um, at some of the things that um, that could might be helpful to you. Um, so um, what's important, what I've learned is really important from um, building these courses and from taking the certification program um, at, at one. Um, we, we need to have um, a lot of, uh, we need to pay close attention to the placement of our objectives um, and consistent placement and, um, and easy to locate objectives are, um, is really important. So students should be able to go into our Canvas courses and find out, find information about what they're supposed to do and why they're supposed to do it, right? What's the goal? Um, and uh, I didn't mention, but these are guidelines from the um, from the um, OEI rubric, the California um, Initiative. It's um, um, online education initiative, um, and they have a rubric that you can follow um, that really helps when you're planning your course, when you're designing your course. Um, does, is anybody familiar with the OEI uh, design rubric? Has anybody read that or used it? No? Okay, so this is this is really going to be helpful to you. Um, I'm just going to discuss um, a few um, sections of this, or a, a one section actually, right now, section A, um, and that does uh, refer to, to navigating the course and, and how students, uh, how we should set it up so students can easily um, find the information that they need. Um, so um, let's see. Um, I will put the. I see you want the link to OEI, and afterwards I'll I'll um, I'll get that for you. Um, and and I actually have that on my slides, so I'll, I'll share my slides with you. Um, so again, placement of the objectives, uh, clearly written objectives. Uh, we should use student centered language when we're when we're. Um, because we're not there in person, <laughs> um, when they they hit our Canvas page, they should find some um, language that is speaking to them and about them, right? Um, and and they should realize that um, all of the content in the course is for them and relevant to them. Um, so cl clearly written objectives with student centered language, um, and then the learning ob objectives uh, should show a clear connection. Um, between the content um, and um, so when they go to the page and they see what they're doing, um, the activities that they're doing, um, they, they need something to tell them how it relates to their objectives. So um, on, on your pages, um, you should have that listed and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, and we have the learning units or mo modules. They should be um, consistent structures and sequence to reduce cognitive load. Um, so um, that means that when you develop your, your the structure of your module, it should be predictable. So module one should, should look like module two, right? And module three, um, it should have a consistent pattern. I personally use the uh, WIPIA pattern. Um, are, is anybody familiar with WIPIA? Um, it's warm up, right? Introduction, practice, presentation, right? We can do that in Canvas. We can actually make our modules um, the same way so that they're predictable. And, and we make sure that we have a sound lesson plan as well, that we're hitting all those really important marks, okay? Um, so um, we're also we also need clearly labeled to, uh, tutorial um, materials. Like students should know how to, to ask for help and how to um, to get help when they're navigating through our course. Um, and we need to front load them with information to help them move smoothly through our courses. Okay. Um, let's see. All right, and. Um, Section D of the um, OEI design rubric um, refers to a lot of the, um, addresses a lot of the accessibility issues too, like um, uh, we should have headings um, that are consistently used to aid in navigation. 
um, and links um, need to be identified with meaningful and unique text. So we shouldn't just, you know, if we have a great website, students want we want students to to visit or uh, link to a um, to some sort of resource. We're not going to just copy and paste the link into our um, our page. We need to identify them with uh, meaningful and unique text. Um, and uh, color contrast. We need to pay attention to our color contrast um, using sufficient color contrast. Um, and the images, we really need to have appropriate alternative text or indicate that it's decorative. So if you put an image in there, we should say we should describe what is in the picture if it's important for student learning. If it's just something that you put there because it looks pretty, um, then you can indicate that it's decorative. Um, so um, it's it's a when students uh, turn on their maybe a reader or something um, to help them read the screen, um, they know um, that 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 they're not missing anything. Um, or uh, for example, sometimes my pages don't load, right? Um, sometimes it, that happens, internet connection is slow. So if you have had an image there, the text will appear um, so that they're not missing that content, even though they can't see the image that we intended them to see. Um, and then we also have video, right? Um, we posting um, videos with accurate captions. It's really important, right? Um, we need to go back and uh, not, we shouldn't just take the transcripts that are auto-generated um, because it might not be accurate, it might say something completely different or nonsensical. Um, so going back in, reading through the transcript, adding punctuation, correcting um, any errors, um, that there might be um, words that have double uh, or different spellings or something, but it, ha it sounds the same. Um, we need to make sure we catch those. Um, I know Zoom um, has lots of different ways it's picked up by those uh, that um, auto transcribing um, machines. Um, so we need to go back and make sure a human has looked at it um, and corrected those, those um, captions. Um, all right. And um, so for the home page, um, we have you have a lot of different options. Um, there's different styles and everybody's different. I'm going to recommend one way of doing it today and I'm going to show you one way of doing it. Um, but you should know that there are multiple ways you can create a home page um, in Canvas. Um, and you can um, have it that your homepage be the course activity stream. Um, this shows when you post things, when things happen in the course, uh, it comes across on, on that front page. Um, you can have a content, content page, which is what I recommend and what I'm going to show you. Um, and this, this way you can, um, you can put images there, you can put links, you can put information, a banner. Um, things like that to welcome the student into a course. Um, and uh, the module view, okay, um, you can have just your modules listed um, on the home page. Um, I don't like that a lot. Uh, many people do that where you just you log into Canvas and then you're going to see um, just all of the modules right there in front of you. No welcome or anything. You just the modules. Um, I don't recommend that, but that is um, that is a way you can set up a home page. Um, and then you can have the assignment lists. You can just have a list of, of what's due, or maybe just posting the, the syllabus or creating a syllabus page and having um, assigning that as your home page. Um, so there are many different ways. Um, what do you use? Uh, anybody who's using Canvas. What do you use as your um, homepage? What's your preferred homepage? Just go ahead and type it into chat. No preferences? Okay, 
All right. Well, I'll check it out. Okay. I have one. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I use a content page, um, but it was difficult for my low beginning um, ESL students. Okay. So, so um, kind of making it student friendly. How can we do that? Right. I'll show you mine. Um, I have a, I don't know what it's called, but I have a welcome banner. Okay. Good. Something to greet students. Uh, welcome with buttons and a syllabus and resources and module uh, to resources and modules. Okay. Mm, all right, good. All right. Um, so what should you include on your home page? Um, again, I'm going to be showing you how to make a page, um, a content page. Um, and uh, it's really important to include instructor content or contact information, right? How can maybe your name, uh, possibly a phone number that they can contact you, um, um, and uh, your, your email address, um, possibly your Zoom meetings. If you meet in Zoom, you might put that information, what days and times you meet. Um, and maybe if you don't, if you're meeting asynchronously, asynchronously and you have um, maybe office hours, post your off office hours there or um, something indicating how students can contact you. Um, because oftentimes, especially if, um, you know, you do have some live meetings, um, it would be really important for them to have that information um, right when they get into your course. Um, and so they don't have to really look for it, right? Um, and um, navigation, um, getting started instructions. A lot of times um, it's overwhelming to students, especially um, like I am an ESL teacher um, and um, the courses I developed for were um, for um, high beginning um, and low intermediate students. Um, and it is, a lot of too much text can be overwhelming. Um, so helping posting maybe a video um, that has instructions and talks about how they should um, use the course um, and how they can navigate from screen to screen is really helpful. Again, put in those um, the uh, captions, the transcript there and, and make sure that you have added punctuation and corrected your spelling. Um, or corrected spelling. Um, and then links or buttons to course modules. Um, you might, uh, some people just type in module one and then they have um, a link to module one um, or they might have buttons, right? You might create buttons. Um, buttons can be created in all sorts of ways. Um, I like to use uh, Canva. Canva is pretty easy for, for me to use and I make buttons. Um, little images, um, and then add links to them. Um, so students can um, just click on module one and then visit the page, right? Um, and then also links or buttons to support pages and resources. So, um, right, being able to contact um, maybe if there's certain services your cap campus offers, tutoring or something like that, um, library resources, um, something like that, that would be nice to um, have on your homepage, a link to it or some sort of button that they can click, or maybe even at the, on the side, have that posted there clearly um, so they can, um, they can get the help that they need when they need it. And also in your, in your module, um, when you're building the module, um, and the individual assignments, um, having a link or a button to um, some help um, when their students are completing the assignments um, is really, really good, especially for, for beginners. Um, if they can just, they say, I don't know, I don't understand this, uh, how to use this quiz or what to do. Um, they might have to uh, maybe contact the tutor or maybe um, contact you, right? Um, so just giving them um, instructions uh, with links or um, information about seeking support. All right, so um, uh, the, here's a couple of, of examples of, um, of what you might find on a homepage um, that's created using a content page. 
Um, I have a banner here um, and I'm using some high contrast colors, right? So they can see um, when they get into the course, like if they're not supposed to be in level four, um, okay, <laughs> maybe I'm in the wrong class. Um, and then I'm using some headings, right? Uh, uh, and then um, giving some course information here, like um, my name, um, my contact information, the date that this course starts um, and uh, when they're gonna log in um, at, or when Zoom will start if I, if I have the synchronous component to my course, what time does this class start, right? If they come to the homepage and they see this information, and they see how to connect with me um, right away, um, it, it is very helpful and reduces their, their stress um, and increases the chance that they'll actually make it into your, your um, Zoom course if, you, if you're using Zoom. Um, and then um, I have instructions, right? Watch this video. Okay, here's a video and it's, it, it's telling them how to begin the course before anything else, right? Um, this is what you're, you're going to do. This is how you're going to um, navigate the course. Um, let's see, this is another way, right? You might have uh, little buttons here um, and you have the modules set up here so they can see each module. Um, they might um, join, like week one, they'd click on week one and go to that week one module. You can open these modules at different times um, in, the, uh, in the week um, and or only as needed, possibly, right? Um, maybe uh, you open them all at once, but I do think that that's content overload and students, you know, we, we kind of want them um, chunking the information, especially for if you're working with ESL students, I know mine, um, they get a little overwhelmed if all of the modules are, are um, visible from the beginning. So you can post a button each week or you can have the buttons there, but the rest of them, they don't work until the week you want them to work in. Um, and um, so here's a video. This would be this is an example of a video uh, that students might find when they uh, land on your homepage and they're new to Canvas and they want to, uh, to know how to navigate the course. So I'm gonna um, share this with you. Welcome to NESL 904. This is Intermediate ESL. I'm going to take you on a tour of our course. This is your home page, and this is the start button. Today, you're oh, sorry, pardon me. <laughs> How rude, I've turned it off. You're going to click this button after you watch this video and you're going to visit the orientation module. The orientation module has a lot of information that will help you as you go through this course this semester. After you review this information, you can get back to the home page by clicking home. Under the start button, you'll notice there are different buttons for different modules. Each week, your teacher will post a description of what you're going to be doing next to the module button so that you can click on the button and go to the coursework you need to complete. If I click on module one, now I can visit module one, getting to know you and I can go through all the different pages and activities that my teacher has assigned. If I click on the Welcome and Overview page, I'll see a description of what this module is about. If I scroll down, I'll be able to go to the next page, and I'll also have some hyperlinks to different activities in this module. 
If I'm done with an activity, I can always scroll back up to the top of my page and click home. And this will bring me to the welcome page where all of the different module buttons um, are located and I can check grades and go to any of the modules I want. I can just click on the module button and it will take me to all of the modules. As you can see, there are so many wonderful activities and lessons planned for you, and we hope that you enjoy working through them. And if you have any questions, please let your teacher know. Okay, so that's just an example. Um, again, uh, I was designing for, um, oh, how did you add the music? Is this video created through Camtasia? It is, um, I created that in, um, in Movavi, um, the Movavi editor. Um, and so I, I um, the best way I've found uh, to create these uh, videos would be to, um, you're going to go into your uh, Zoom, um, to your Zoom and go ahead and uh, record and then put that into an editor. Um, and then um, it, it's kind of easier that way you get the transcript as, as well, um, and then put it into an editor and then you can post it online um, in, in YouTube. Um, so I use Movavi, but there's lots of different Really, really wonderful pro programs that we have out there. I was just most com comfortable with um, Movavi. Um, and it's, yeah, free, free music with your program. Um, let me see here. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, um, Studio, um, let's see. Yeah, there's, there's there are lots of them um, and you can play around with what's most comfortable for you. Um, you know, when I started, making videos i started with just like the the microsoft <laughs> whatever they had um and then i i, I just kind of started playing with different editors um and the more you you do that the more you find what what kind of fits your style um what kind of user you are and 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 um and what kind of works for you um so don't don't get restricted to just one kind um just try try a few and if they don't work for you you know sign up for some trials um edit a video um and see what what works for you because in the end um we do need to to feel comfortable with what we're using um and um that makes it more fun too right if if it's if it's not a pain <laughs> um to make it um and i like making the videos um uh it's 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 fun for me. I make a lot of them. Um, all right, so uh, let's see. Let's pause that. And we'll go on. Okay. Um, so um, that is the homepage. In a minute, um, we are going to go into um, into my Canvas courses, um, and I'm going to show you an in depth look. And we're going to take a look at the homepage, and we'll look at the modules. Okay. But for right now, I want to just um, to, to show you what what I was I'm thinking about when I'm designing um, again for the for the module I'm thinking about consistency um, each mod, module had should have the same structure or lesson planning it shouldn't be just kind of like uh, I don't know I'm gonna put this here this week right um, it should be like think in your in your head what you know if you're filling out a lesson plan on a piece of paper um it's just going to be the same thing in your module um and you want to you want to be uh varied too right you don't want to just have content pages um you need opportunities for um assessment right um so you want to have some, put some quizzes in there if the, your quiz is going to be for practice you can set it to as a practice quiz um, you can use discussion boards um, for evaluation or to check for understanding. Um, so use different things. You can use um, the quizzes, the discussions, the pages, the assignments. Um, you want to have a variety uh, of ways that students can interact. Um, some of them will do well on the quizzes. 
and some of them won't, but they'll do really well on the discussion board. So having um, a variety of ways students can participate um, is really valuable, but you know, keep it consistent, have the same types of things in your, in your modules each week, or maybe if you have a discussion board, maybe put that the first thing that they're gonna do each week or the last thing, um, put it in a consistent spot. Um, and then um, student-centered, make sure it's student-centered, right? Using that student-centered language um, when you're explaining activities and goals. Um, it doesn't, especially for some of our, our students who, you know, they're learning English and they, they don't, they shouldn't have to go get a dictionary and look up every word you're using. It shouldn't seem like a manual. It should seem like you're talking to them because it's relevant, what, what they're doing is relevant to them. Um, and um, let's see here, another pres presenter mentioned something to click on to make sure the site is accessible. What is this? I'm gonna show you that. Uh, when we go into the course, I'll, I'll show you that. Um, and let's see here, we have provide an overview, right? The first page of your module should list the objectives and the instructions. Um, plan ahead, um, check your links and content before publishing your module. This is really important, especially um, if you have, if you're posting videos um, from a maybe a website or YouTube channel that you think is amazing and you've curated all these wonderful things to show your students. Um, and then they take down their site, <laughs> right? Uh oh, um, so if you're reusing your site or, or you're reusing your course, make sure you go in, click on all of your links, make sure that everything is loading um, because uh, that is a problem. Um, and you can um, make sure, you know, head that off so student, you don't get a midweek um, confused email from a student that says, you know, there's nothing on this page. It says it's, it's taken down. Um, so you can head those issues off um, and make it more student friendly by checking your content. Um, and especially if you're using somebody else's, for example, if you're sharing, if you get something from an, um, an OER site, uh, really make sure you check everything um, because it's, um, you know, we share things, um, but by the time it gets to you, um, it, it might not be functioning as well as it originally did. Um, and um, be clear, include instructions and due dates. So on, on each of your assignments, on each of your, um, your uh, quizzes or your discussion boards, um, make sure you include the instructions and due dates. Don't just say, okay, I posted an assignment for you and that students get to Canvas and they just find a submit button, right? That's not very helpful to them. Um, and the likelihood that they're gonna successfully complete that assignment, you know, it, it, it kind of lessens obviously. But, um, okay, so include instructions and due dates. Um, all right, so, um, when we look at, at the module, um, let's see, uh, we have a, a student-centered, um, okay, so that, oh, that homepage, I'm sorry, I was reading in the chat. Um, when we look at the, um, that overview page in our Canvas course in the module, um, it should say something like, uh, what will we do? Or, or, you know, some sort of, some language that tells a student that this is, okay, I'm gonna tell you what this whole course is about. Um, and so, for example, I have a, a personal note here. It's nice to see you in class. I look forward to getting to know you this week. Um, you are going to work on introducing and describing yourself to others. There's a lot of ways we could write that, um, but directing it to the student as if you're having a conversation with them, um, is much better than just kind of finding a, la land, a landing page and all they get is this kind of, you know, the objectives and it's a list. These, these are, this is very helpful and you could even change these objectives to be more student friendly um, using uh, student friendly language. Um, but I think that these, these ones right here were, um, I, were simplified. So, um, any of your course objectives, don't just take it from your um, outline of record. 
um, kind of modify it for, for what your students are going to understand. Because it's not, the, the real importance is not listing the objectives, um, but making sure students understand those objectives, right? So you can change the language um, and simplify it according to your student group. Um, all right, so student-friendly language. Um, let's see here. Um, so we're going to visit um, my Canvas course um, and we're gonna view the homepage and we'll view the settings on the homepage. Um, we'll check for accessibility. Um, so I'll go to some pages where I know it's not accessible and we need to change it. Um, and we'll see how the buttons are working. Um, and then we'll review the module structure and flow, okay? Um, any questions up to this point before we dive in? Okay. All right. Okay, um, so I'm going to go to my dashboard. Um, if you don't use Canvas, when you, um, if, if you haven't used it yet, you when you log in, you'll have a list of all of, of your courses, right? So up here are my published, published courses or courses I'm taking. Um, and down here are my practice shells, which is always really good if you, um, if you can design your course in a practice shell and then move it over. Um, and um, yeah, uh, um, I saw that in chat, um, broken links. Um, and I'll give you some um, advice on broken links as well um, and how to avoid them. Um, so um, here are some courses that I haven't started yet. Um, so if I open them up, it, it looks like this, right? It says create a new module. Um, and so um, here people might, right? You have all of these items that you can choose from over here. Um, this looks really kind of not friendly, right? <laughs> um, a, a student really wouldn't know what to do with, with this. Um, so what I do, I'm going to show you this one, um, which was created um, for other teachers um, during the pandemic to give them something to start with. Um, I, I used, I created a home page, right? Um, so I created a page. You can um, go to pages, and um, if you want to create a new one, right? You're gonna, you can view all pages and you can add a page, and then you can start creating your page. Um, you'll give it a title. Um, you can insert a banner here, created on Canva or whatever um, site. Uh, Buncee has really good banners you can use as well. Um, and so you can um, insert your banner here, um, and you can give instructions um, all right here. Um, let me leave that. So um, on this page, I have my welcome video that I showed you, um, and this is just giving instructions for how to navigate the course. Of course, you can also, um, this one was not personalized um, because I was developing it for someone else um, to use, but you can add information about yourself as well, which is always nice, right? Hi, my name is, I'm from, I've been teaching for, um, and maybe show a picture or two um, to kind of uh, personalize it and humanize it. Um, and then start here, if the students start, click start here, um, that it'll take them directly to a, a, an orientation module, right? So let me go back to home and show you that. I'm gonna um, edit right here so we can go into edit mode. And um, I have my banner here. If I click information uh, uh, image options, so I've added some um, alternate text, right? Blue and white banner, intermediate ESL, level one and ESL 904. So I put what it is and um, what's on it, right? So of course, if this doesn't load, um, the image doesn't load on someone's phone or on their computer, um, then that text will pop, will, will be there still. So they know what's there. Um, and then I, I'm using, uh, let's see if I click here, if you, you can see there's a heading here. Um, and then I have my, my video, 
um, posted. And then I have some buttons. If you can, you can see that this is an image that I've posted here. Um, and then I, I, I've added a link. Okay, so here's the link options, right? Um, so you can click here um, and uh, let's see, I can remove a link. Let's see, I'm gonna remove the link. Okay, and now I want to add a link. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go over here, insert, sorry, insert a link and I'm gonna put course link, okay? So when you do that, it shows you all of the pages and everything you've developed. And I'm gonna click on module because I want to link this to a module. And it's gonna be the start here, orientation module, okay? Um, and now my student, when they click on this link, they'll be brought directly to that orientation module. So they don't have to go uh, alter alternatively, they would uh, click modules here and then look for the module that they're in, right? Or the module I want them to, to go to. Um, here I have um, module one, and this links to, if you can see it says module one, getting to know you. Um, so uh, my, my button is labeled, right? I have the alternative uh, text, right? Uh, it says module one, so it it's telling uh, the student what it is. Um, and then I can also add more information here to the side if I wanted. Um, this right here is what you'd call a decorative image. So I'm not adding the alternative text there. Um, and then I wanna check to make sure everything is okay so I can go to my accessibility guide, right? And it'll tell you, oh, your documents and video, make sure it has captions there. Um, make sure everything is, is what it's supposed to be, right? Um, did you add um, uh, the text? Um, is it correct? Um, if, if I don't have, um, if I didn't check this um, prior, it might show me that I didn't label, I didn't add alternative text to my um, buttons or that I didn't use headings or something. Um, okay, and Penny uh, Pearson is saying, uh, you can, uh, can you show the ally accessibility? Okay, um, so we did that. Um, all right, and so we're going to go to, let me see, let me scroll up. Um, uh, I want to show you here, do you see all of this? This is a lot of stuff here. And if you just, if you don't change the settings here, all of this will appear to your student. So I'm gonna to go to settings um, and I've added a, a picture here. It goes along with, it's my banner. But what I'm really interested in is the, the navigation. Um, so you can add or take away items from um, this landing page here. So uh, I want my homepage to have uh, announcement. Uh, let's see here, I, I can have, this, I don't know what that is, Comet Connect, that's a resource, uh, Ally Accessibility Report, um, online tutoring, let's see. So my, my student doesn't really need, well, the disability support, ask a library, item banks, no. Uh, maybe I'm not gonna use collaborations. They don't need to know everybody who's in class. Uh, grades, yes, announcements, yes. Um, so I'm gonna leave this. I'm going to leave these items here and then I'm going to click save. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go home. I'm going to check right here, student view. What does this look like to my student? Oh, okay, good. You see, it's a, a lot less content and it's more usable here. Um, uh, and they can still get to the modules from here if they click modules then they can find all the modules listed here, right? Um, but they, they're, they're probably going to rely on the buttons. So for example, if they wanna to go to module two, it'll land on module two, right? Um, so let me leave that. Um, and uh, let's take a look at the modules. So in, when you're building your Canvas course, you should always have um, an orientation module. Um, so you don't have to post, you don't have to 
put everything on your homepage. You can just put the most important things like your name, your phone number, right? Your email address, your Zoom time. Um, but this is gonna have more in-depth information and maybe an icebreaker, right? Um, something to get uh, students started in the course. Um, and if you want to, you can set, um, set it up where students have to um, progress through the course um, in a certain way, right? Um, so um, you can do that. Um, you can add a module here as well, You're, or you can add pages. You can create content. Um, you can create an assignment or you can create a discussion. Um, and then you're gonna uh, add the, the name, right? And if you wanna indent it or not indent it, right? The, the levels, how far in should it be? Um, and so you can add things there on the side by adding your little plus here. Um, and then my, my uh, content modules where I'm actually teaching a lesson, my, these are my lessons, um, I'll, I'll label it clearly. Um, and you can even put the date, like maybe the week that you're in. Um, and, and you can do that by, you know, you edit your, your uh, module and you can add um, the date. Um, you can add requirements. For example, um, if you want your students to move through the course, you don't want them to just go willy nilly all over, press whatever. Um, you can um, tell them that they need to, um, to move through the, the course in sequential order. Um, so they can view the, the item and then it's marked as done, right? Um, it, you can um, pick each one, right? The simple lesson, okay, then simple present tense lesson, and then they need to view the item or mark it as done or contribute to the page, okay? So this kind of helps students who get lost in the modules and they're not sure which pages they've completed yet. Um, so here um, you can see I'm using the uh, WIPIA format, uh, the, um, right, the welcome and the overview, right? Getting to know you. So if they click on this page, they'll find um, a banner. They, it's clearly labeled, this is module one. Um, and the theme is getting to know you. I have a personalized message to them. Um, and then I'm explaining to them what we're doing, the objectives, and the content. What exactly are we doing that's going to help us to reach these goals? Um, and then I have links to the different pages. You can do this or not do this. It's okay. Um, I, I included this in here um, and um, it, it lists everything so they can visit each page um, just from, from this or they can navigate through the, the module um, I put on here, click the next button to go to the next page. Sometimes if you're new to um, navigating through the course, you might need these indicators, right? A student might need this. Um, just make sure that button is, is <laughs> you've checked for accessibility. Um, and if when I'm looking at this, I can see this little green thing right here. That tells me that, yes, I I did go ahead and add in the uh, alternative text and it's, it, everything's okay there. Um, and I can go next, right? And then I'm gonna find, um, find this practice quiz. Let me preview it. So when I end up on this, um, my warm up page, right? I'm going, uh, you know, warm up and then um, practice and uh, presentation. So this is a warm up activity. You can choose, you know, you can have lots of different things as a warm up warm-up activity. Um, and then um, I, so I have the goal, what they're doing, and then the instructions, right, what they should do. Um, and I'm telling them you can, you can do this activity as many times as you would like. And then of course, the, the teacher would insert the due date here. Um, and I've made sure that this, this uh, video um, has closed captions on it. Um, I, and I, um, each time you, you need to make sure um, that they do have uh, closed captions. Um, and if not, you can put them through your Canvas Studio um, and Canvas Studio will add them. 
if you have a link, if you find a video from, from YouTube, you can take that link and add it um, to, um, let me show you where you can do that. Um, so I'm gonna edit this quiz, okay? Um, and if um, I wanted to add something um, right here, Canvas Studio, um, then I could add a link, right? Um, so uh, external link or upflow from a computer. And then I would just uh, add my YouTube or Vimeo li link. Um, and then you could add uh, your, your captions or your transcripts from there. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, all right. And uh, here, because this is a practice, this is a part of uh, my lesson that is a practice. Um, I'm going to allow multiple attempts. Um, I, I'm going to let students see the correct answers, maybe. Um, and then I, I can set my due dates here. And that will um, then students can see on their home page, it'll uh, pop up what activities are due. OK, um, let's see here. Uh, let's go back. I'm going to go back to the home page. OK, um, and I'm going to do this in. Um, yeah, let me see here. Go to let's see week two again. OK, um, and if you can see here, just like module one, right, I have my overview. I have a warm up, um, maybe flashcards here and a family uh, tree practice quiz. Um, and then an activity here that students can see what kind of activity it is. Um, now, this one, I really um, this one is a link. OK. Um, and it's risky, risky putting the link in, because when you just use create a page using a link, it might be broken, it might not uh, um, load. Um, so you can embed um, it, as opposed to um, just using um, creating a page using an, a, a URL, you could um, create a page and then insert the link inside that page. Um, and then have students visit it. Um, yes, Yolanda, um, you had a question? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to let you know, you've got about eight minutes to go. Okay, thank you so much. Um, let's see. Um, it's it's not all create, uh, it says, is this all create through page? No, um, the, the content pages, yes, but um, the activities are a variety of things. They're quizzes, discussions, um, this one was a, a link, right, um, to something else. If this wasn't working, um, then the students would arrive at this page and it would be, it would say link is broken, right? Um, so the best way to avoid that is to create a content page and then embed or to, um, to put the link so they can go um, to whatever it is that you were, that you wanted them to see. Um, in this case, it's, it's a Buncee. Um, I can see that 710 students have, have accessed this page successfully. So yay, <laughs> I'm glad that this one isn't broken. Um, but if it were to be broken, they could just click here and um, they could go directly to that page anyways. It's, it's just a link, right? Um, so you might um, create a page, give instructions, right? Uh, tell students what to do with that. Um, instead of just putting it there um, like that. Um, okay, so um, Julie, you say, I teach a higher level listening and speaking class. Having captions would compromise the integrity of the course. Um, so I let students know at the beginning that many of the videos are purposefully not captioned. But if anyone needs captioning to let me know, I was told that this is okay to do. Um, yeah, uh, maybe um, if, if there's some sort of listening task, um, I would... Uh, um, I think that if you're, if it's a teaching video, you, you do need to, um, have all of the, the captions in there. If it's a practice video, um, you need to indicate in there uh, and maybe like you said, provide transcripts upon request. Um, that is tricky, but any sort of, um, uh, lesson that you have, it needs to be, uh, you need to have the, the captions in there, um. It can't just be, um, you know, kind of like 
you know, you have to have a specific task related if you're gonna take out the, um, the, the captions. Um, and let's see here. Um, so you might have, um, let me show you a, a discussion. So this is a, a discussion board. Okay, so um, you're gonna have, uh, you know, this is labeled um, here. I've put some teachers choose to put the due date at the top, or you can have the due date at the bottom, right? Um, but this is uh, instructions, right? The prompt, here's um, what, what the questions are, um, and then instructions for the activity. Um, and then when, if I want them to be talking to each other, right? When should I put my first reply? Um, and when should I put um, the, the second reply, right, to, to the peers directly. So we're having a conversation. Um, and I also here, I put in a lot of resources here, uh, how to submit an audio file, um, because it says I did in my instructions, I said, include an audio recording of your answers, right? Um, and that's, that's something where um, you're gonna need to go back and, and um, I've, I've given instructions how to submit an audio file. And I, I also have a link, um, these, these ones right here, um, technically this is not good, right? Um, what's wrong with this? What do you think is wrong with what I did here? Anybody know, critique this one? Okay, so um, I haven't put in the unique text, right? Um, I'm just posting the link in here. Um, it would be better if I, um, if I changed, um, added words instead and, you know, and a hyperlink to those words, not just posted this um, like that. Um, it, that would be um, better for our students if we did that. Um, okay, so I know I, I only have like a, a minute left. <laughs> so do you have any questions for me? Anything um, that I can answer for you? Um, anything you wanna see? I have a question. Okay. Um, hi. Did, hi. The, the, the part that says click on the next but button to go to the next page at the bottom before the, the next that's already in Canvas. How, yeah. What is that? Is that something you made on Canva or? Yeah, I, um, I did. I made that on Canva. Um, and then you just inserted it down there at the lower I, right. I inserted it down there. Um, so okay. yeah, just to give them um, and you can do that throughout the course, or you can do it um, just on the initial pages until they get the hang of it. Okay. Um, but uh, I've found that sometimes people just don't, they if they don't know, right? If they've never used it before, sometimes yeah. just some additional instructions might be, be very useful. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right, anything else I can share with you? No. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for being here today. Um, and again, thank you for letting me share my experience. Um, again, this was collected experiences over the past couple of years and developing um, courses for other teachers. So this, um, I would, my personal courses, I would um, add more of myself into them. Um, but this was uh, designed for other students, other teachers to kind of take off, right? To get, develop, um, and, and, and use um, during this time.